horror. Let me tell you something about horror. Some people just can't live without it. For every child or, you know, adult who is afraid to enter the dark basement, there's at least one other child or adult that happily live in that same basement. Just watching. Waiting. But anyway, here are the top 10 games that are about to be released this year. On number 10, we have Buy Sweet Carol. Have you ever wondered what will happen if an early Disney princess movie suddenly becomes a horror? And you're probably thinking, I don't need to wonder anything that's straight up Snow White from the beginning to the end. First of all, yes, you are indeed right, but also By Sweet Carol, a game by Chris Darrow, the guy behind Remata. By Sweet Carol is a hand-drawn side-scrolling horror game with graphics inspired by the classic princess animated movies. You have all the lovely signs of the animated movies you grew up with. A sensitive owl, a fantastic kingdom, sweet bunnies, creepy or orphanage and a feminist political movement. Also, the bunnies are made of tar and want to kill you. The heroine Lana Benton is on the trail of Carol, a girl who escaped a 19th century girls orphanage with the adorable and yet somehow creepy name Bunny Hall. The game, as per the small amount of information out there, is mostly what you expect from a hand-painted horror. There's platforming, there's stealth, simple battles, and of course shape-shifting. Yes, Lana can turn herself into a rabbit to reach high places or get through narrow openings. Now before I watched the actual gameplay, I had my doubts about this game pulling off actual scary atmosphere out of a classic princess movie and a side-scrolling platformer combination. Some jump scares maybe, but definitely nothing more serious than that. However, although far from a nightmare fuel, there is a definite unsettling atmosphere and not the regular type either. More like someone showing you a movie of your childhood fears or nightmares. While not particularly scary now, they still make you feel somewhat uneasy. You know what I mean? And you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen any other game going for those type of scares or even feelings, which makes By Sweet Carol very interesting project in my book. Sadly, there's no actual release date, but the game is supposed to be released till the end of this year for all the PlayStations, all the Xboxes, PC and Nintendo Switch. So, fingers crossed. Number 9 is Killer Clowns from Out of Space the Game. And if you are wondering how come clowns are in a horror games list, clowns are jolly and cheerful, they make me laugh and full of happiness. You should go. Now, if you've never heard about this one, Killer Clowns from Outer Space the game is based on an 80s horror comedy of the same name about a bunch of aliens looking like, you guessed it, clowns, who terrorize the citizens of an otherwise peaceful and usually clownless US town. All of this is now an asymmetrical multiplayer game in which a group of up to 3 killer clowns try to hunt down a group of up to 7 townsfolk. The clowns will have different weapons and traps at their disposal which sound and look exactly as what you would expect from a clown weapon to look like. Blast the innocent people with a popcorn bazooka, hit them with a jawbreaker mace, hunt them down using a well-trained balloon dog. There's also a popcorn mine and some of the classes can use popcorn to tag targets. So expect a lot of popcorn. And yes, I said classes talking about clown death, right? There will be five clown classes upon release and I'm pretty much sure there will be more in the form of DLCs down the road. But what you get initially are tank, fighter, scout, tracker and a trapster. Now check this out. All of them will have unique abilities and tools at their disposal. And if you expect something serious, you should have started paying attention to this video earlier. So the fighter class, for example, can turn himself into a pizza box in order to sneak closer to the prey. For speed, he can utilize his trustworthy tricep both indoors and outdoors, unlike the Tracker Clown's invisible car which can only be used outside because of realism. There is also Deadly Cotton Candy, Deployable, Clown Baby, etc. Sounds absolutely awesome and I'm not even joking. And of course, all of this over-the-top 80s comedy horror vibe will be presented in Unreal Engine 5 exclusively for the next-gen consoles. What that means is you will be able to enjoy every single wrinkle and zit that populates the clown face only a clown mother can love. This is 4K Full HD wrinkles and zits. Enjoy! Killer Clowns from Outer Space the game releases in June 4th, 2024 on PC, Xbox, S and X and PlayStation 5. Next, we have Still Wakes the Deep, a first-person narrative horror game by The Chinese Room, the British developer behind games like Dear Esther, Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, and Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. The game puts you in the role of an offshore oil rig worker. Now, 
oil rigs are usually scary premise by themselves. But when you add a vicious storm in the middle of the freezing North Sea waters and a paranormal horror lurking in the dark, it gets to a whole nother level of terrifying. The Chinese room team have a knack for making everyday settings unsettling, so it gets really interesting when the setting is unsettling on its own. Now try to say that three times fast. As the hero, you need to locate and save your crew, navigating through the now abandoned oil rig that is collapsing and getting torn apart by a storm that only the North Sea can produce. And also, you are being hunted by witches. Okay, I don't think it's witches, but there is a supernatural element to the game in the form of thing or things that want to hurt your body. And everything looks terrifying. Just look at the part of the gameplay where the guy crawls on a beam over the black stormy sea. If this doesn't make you feel a bit uneasy, I don't know. Also, as the narrative part in the genre for Shadows, you don't have any weapons at your disposal, no secret powers to unlock, only your wits and the tools you can find. You will piece the story bit by bit from your surroundings and will doubt your sanity every subsequent second while making your way through failing and unstable construction in the middle of a rather large, cold and super angry water. But that's about all that is known about Still Wakes the Deep at this point. The game will release for Windows, Xbox, SNX and PlayStation 5 early in 2024. Next up we have Hollow Body, a survival horror game paying homage to the likes of Silent Hill and Alone in the Dark. You play as Mika, a shipper, the futuristic word for a career I guess, who has been stranded in the abandoned part of the dystopian city of Bristol, United Kingdom. Mika is looking for her partner Sasha, but as happens in a situation where you are stuck in a seemingly abandoned quarantined neighborhood, she soon starts to look mostly for a way to escape. There is no much information about why this part of Bristol is quarantined, but I think it is safe to assume the reason is not smallpox. Now, if you've just had a quick glimpse at the gameplay, I'm sure you can swear this is Silent Hill 3. This is how big of a homage Hollow Body pays to the Konami series, from the 2000 graphics in the interface to the semi-fixed camera. There will even be a checkpoint-based safe system just to keep you on your toes even more. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. If done properly, Hollow Body has the potential to bring back some nearly forgotten but very horrific and real memories, especially if you've grown up with the Silent Hill series. It seems that 2024 is going to be the year of throwback horror. But anyways, back to Hollow Body. The trailer reveals a good amount of mechanics and some of the points that the gameplay will emphasize on like resource management for example. We can see Mika gathering tools and resources in what seems like a limited space inventory and environmental puzzles revolving mostly around making her way through the ruins that at some point have been the city of Bristol. I said semi-fixed camera, but at one point during what I reckon is a cutscene, it goes to first person. I don't know if first person view will be an option, but I can see it being used more as a cinematic effect than anything else. Expect more of this in this game. Still, Hollow Body seems like an interesting project and I will definitely keep tabs on it. Hollow Body will release early 2024 for PC only. Next we have Paranormal Tales, and this one is something special. Built as a set of tales all in the form of found footage from body cams, phones, VHS cameras, etc. As you might have guessed, all the people that the footage belongs to are missing, so you get the merry opportunity to relive their most terrifying last moments through their eyes. So if you've ever wondered how much cardiac strain you can take, this game will probably answer with all of it. I mean look at this stuff. We all knew the day will come. We've all seen tech previews of like photorealistic videos of like stone piles. It was a matter of time before someone somewhere decided they want to use Unreal Engine 5 to create cardiac arrest the game basically. So this is where we're at in our technological evolution, paying real money for full-blown anxiety on demand. Anyways, don't play it around to your grandparents. Jokes aside though, let's dig deeper into the game itself. Apparently, there is this horror cam archives committee, which really love watching people die violently on camera. As part of this committee, I'm guessing, you will have to go through all the pieces of footage. Each one being a self-contained experience with the proper audio effects, jump scares, shake cameras, 
and actually quite impressive voice acting. From what we've seen so far, there is a footage from what looks like a suburban house, haunted by a thing and also of someone looking for his dog in the woods at night. What's the worst that can happen, right? I don't know, but it sure does happen. The game asks, do you have what it takes to play through the end of this footage? To which I can definitely answer, no, no I don't. Paranormal Tales will release on PC only and is slated for 2024, but the release date hasn't been announced yet, so take this with a serious grain of salt. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. It takes just a second and it means the world to me. Thank you. On number 5 we have the PS5 and Windows remake of Until Dawn. In a surprising revelation following Sony's State of Play event, we received an in-depth look into Ballistic Moon's innovative take on Until Dawn, rendered in the stunning Unreal Engine 5. It's crucial to note that the key term here is remake, which means Ballistic Moon's Until Dawn will not only sport a new coat of paint, but will also change some game mechanics. For example, the remake is set to abandon its predecessor's fixed camera angles in favor of a fresh third-person perspective. This is a significant change which I personally greeted with Are you sure it wasn't already a third-person game? Huh. After checking, I confirm it wasn't, though it has been a while since I played until dawn so my lapse in memory should be promptly forgiven. Ballistic Moon's ambition doesn't stop with altering perspectives. The game will be infused with a more sophisticated and emotive ambience utilizing a wider spectrum of cinematic tones. The enhancements extend into the narrative domain, promising to explore previously untouched emotional depths of the story. And if that doesn't pique your interest, you will also find new locations new interactions and new collectibles. Whether these additions are sufficient remains to be seen, but a significant audio transformation is also planned. The game is set to feature a brand new soundscape and musical score moving away from the original composer in favor of a new one, namely the talented Mark Corvan, a composer with an impressive portfolio of horror movie scores, including The Witch, The Lighthouse and The Black Phone, among others. While this new iteration of the PS5 and PC aims to delve into greater emotional depths and nuance, it's hard not not to wonder if it will still retain the original teen slasher horror movie vibe with all its pros and cons. When? Later this year is the closest we have to a release date, so on PC and PS5. On the number 4 spot we have Post Trauma. Another upcoming horror title ripping pages straight from the book of classics like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, which is not a bad thing at all. You play as Roman, a middle-aged train conductor who is trapped in an alternative reality full of horrors. Although familiar, the surroundings are twisted and have what seems like flesh parts. As Roman, you will have to find your way out of this dark reality, solving puzzles and unraveling a mystery that seemingly has something to do with Roman's mental health after a traumatic event, a hands the name post trauma Parts of the surroundings and the events that take place inside them may be a thick of Roman's imagination, but it's safe to say that most of them are real and out there to kill him. The inexplicable horrors that surround Roman are exactly that, inexplicable, and the game won't hold your hand in building the lore and the cause of the setting. You will unravel the mystery bit by bit, diving deeper into the twisted and dangerous reality which doesn't seem happy with the newcomer. As for the technical part, Post Trauma will be built on Unreal Engine 5, so expect the photorealistic flashy surroundings if that is even a thing. A mix of over the shoulder and fixed camera angles will add even more to the cinematic horror experience that Post Trauma is trying to create. And from previous information, Post Trauma is everything it says it is. Not just a pretty and grossly grotesque setting that lacks the atmosphere, but a tense experience which will keep you on the edge of your seat not just visually. Monsters will try to creep on you. The score will keep you on your toes even when you are sure the room you are in is safe. And I don't know if you noticed, but Roman doesn't seem like the action hero type of guy, so don't expect him to do wield guns or put monsters out cold with superman punches. I'm guessing, and that's a wild guess here, his main weapon will be the ability to not be in the same room with a monster. Post Trauma still doesn't have a release date, but Spring 2024 is what circles around in the web, so set your expectations for the upcoming season. The game will release on Windows, Xbox X and S and PlayStation 5, but no information for last generation console.
However, we have a certain date for our next game on the list, Alone in the Dark, a reimagining of the 1992 original horror game and the seventh installment of the series. Alone in the Dark follows Emily Hartwood and private investigator Edward Carnby as they travel to their Seddon Manor, a home for the mentally ill to investigate the disappearance of Jeremy Hartwood, Emily's uncle. As you might have seen already, the protagonists are modeled after and played by Jodie Comer and David Harbour respectively, and from what I've read, heard and seen, they did a pretty good job voicing Emily and Edward, which is always welcome, since there are many examples of good actors falling flat in video games. Although a descendant of a horror series, the reimagining of Alone in the Dark feels more like a finely tuned psychological thriller than an all-out action-packed horror with actual investigation taking place in the their set manner. While jump scares will probably be plenty, the game relies mostly on the atmosphere. The setting, the music, the story and furthermore the acting will do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to creating an unnerving experience. As for the action part, it will, as I said earlier, take somewhat of a backseat to the investigation and who done it tension. That being said, the game is far from a peaceful walk through a big house. You will have a reasonable for the genre amount of firearms and a melee attack to keep the monsters at bay. As for the world, Alone in the Dark will have you jump between the gloomy, unsettling Dersetto manner and the dream world of Jeremy Hartwood, where every visit will be different in terms of places and setting. While the manor will have you do most of the investigation work, including talking to people, finding clues and getting to previously inaccessible places via puzzles, the dream world will basically put you inside the dark mind of mentally ill patients, with all the inexplicable horrors and untied imagination can come up with. One time you will fight your way through monster infested streets of New Orleans, the next time you will be on an oil rig, working 16 hour shifts, which is like a totally different kind of nightmare. I'm kinda stoked about this one, I have an Alan Wake 2 shaped hole in my heart, which Alone in the Dark might not feel, but it sure looks like it will fit through. Alone in the Dark releases on 20th of March this year for PC, Xbox X and S and PlayStation 5. Next up we have Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, the sequel to the 2017 action-adventure game Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. And while described as an action-adventure game, the game has enough of a dark and twisted fantasy atmosphere to be considered a horror too. The sequel will carry over the concepts and gameplay elements of its predecessor, including permadeath, utilizing puzzles and rules to advance, and an examination of Senua's mental state. As you probably know, the latter was a significant part of the first game's atmosphere, although there's not a pleasant of stuff that are known about Hellblade 2, some things got confirmed by the developer Studio Ninja Theory quite recently. First of all, the game will be built on Unreal Engine 5, which doesn't come as a surprise to anyone with a pair of working guys. The graphics are gorgeous, detailed to a point where Senua's close-ups can easily be confused with close shots of a real person. Ninja Theory are apparently not holding back on the production of the game, releasing information about how, for example, they built real costumes and then scan them and put them into the game for more photorealistic feeling. They've also collaborated with an actual Scandinavian folk band for the soundtrack to add further to the immersion. As for the fighting system, it will be revamped, adding more dynamics and realism, which is a good news because to me personally, the limited fighting system of the first game left a lot to be desired. Also, the devs talk about more variation in the enemy department, which is a welcomed upgrade. What we know for the story so far is that Senua takes the fight to the Marauders and her mental state is presumably not as big as an enemy to her as in the previous game. For those of you who played the first game, you probably remember that in the end Senua kind of made peace with her inner voices, so expect them to be somewhat of an ally in the sequel maybe. All in all, Hellblade 2 seems to be turning into a very polished product that I can't wait to play. However, Keep in mind, and this also has been confirmed, the game will not release on PS5, so if you do all your gaming on Sony's consoles, you will not be able to play this one. At least on release. I mean, you've probably heard about all the Xbox exclusives that are presumably making the jump to PlayStation, so I won't be surprised if Hellblade 2 eventually pops up in the PlayStation Store. But that is not going to happen for a couple of months or more after the release for sure. And talking about release, the date is May 21st this year, so put that in your calendar if you're a fan. Senua Saga Hellblade 2 will will release on Windows and Xbox Series S and X.
And of course, on number one, we have the remake of Silent Hill 2. We had a trailer recently, but no release date. So yeah, patience. Developed by Bluebird Team, the guys behind Layers of Fear series, Silent Hill 2 Remake is the first game in an ongoing initiative by Konami to rejuvenate the interest to the series following the road that the Resident Evil remakes paved. Although not much is seen in the trailer, the biggest obvious change is the camera. The remake ditches the fixed camera angles for a modern, over-the-shoulder, third-person perspective. The combat system will also be revised, adding more variety in dynamic, which comes with a different point of view. However, this particular change ended up being a controversy, as the shadow of doubt that the remake will lean more on the combat disrespecting the original's combat to story ratio started to appear. If you've played the original Silent Hill, you already know that this is a game relying first on the atmosphere then on the story, while the combat is so basic that it's almost not existent. And at the same time, this basic combat adds a lot to the atmosphere. There is not much you can do in the case of a threat. The protagonist, James, doesn't have a military background. He's not a trained marksman. He's as powerless as the next guy, or as the player, which subconsciously is scary. All I'm saying is people are afraid that this type of fear will be removed from the remake by adding the new combat system. I don't, I don't know. I don't think this will be the case. I mean, we've seen like very small part of what the game will be. But let me know what you think in the comments. Anyways, whatever happens in the end, I will still play Silent Hill 2 Remake, so it is what it is. Silent Hill 2 Remake will release for PC and PS5, but as I said, the release date is still not disclosed. And there you have it folks, these are the top hard games that are about to release this year. Which one are you looking forward to? Is there a game that you are looking forward to but didn't make the list? Let me know in the comments, let's talk about it. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Cal out.